it's Iowa Prairie Girl. Today I want to show you lead plant. Lead plant is a true native wildflower in North America. Oops. And I also have my dog Prairie Dog. She's laying down right here with me. So if you hear her panting, it is a beautiful June 77 degree day here in central Iowa. I am in Saragota County and I am in an absolutely gorgeous corner prairie. And a corner prairie is a prairie that um, is developed by um, either roads or railroad tracks and it creates a little patch of vacant land and it, this prairie was restored or this land was replanted in 1995 by the Saragota Conservation and it is absolutely stunning. This is one of my favorite places to come in July. It's just a few miles um, down the road from my home. So looking at lead plant, a uh, lead plant is a great plant. It uh, actually indicates that a prairie is in good condition. It provides nitrogen back to the land. Um, and it also is great for um, erosion control and it is very, very drought resistant. It has an unusual name and there are there is really no specific uh, reason uh, or why it's called lead plant. There's a lot of different uh, folklore and we're going to take a look at those and we're also going to take a look at some of its other names. We've got buffalo bellow and prairie shoestring. So if you stay with me, we'll take a closer look at lead plant. lead plant. A lead plant is actually a bush. It's a perennial that grows out in the prairie. It's one of the few bushes that you're going to find in the prairie. It gets to be one to three feet tall. It has a woody stem that will uh, remain the next year. Um, if there's a fire, this woody stem would, would uh, burn up, um, but you'll find, you'll find the, the uh, lead plant with, with the stems left over from last year. Uh, one of the reasons that it's called lead plant, if you look at the leaves, it has a very compound um, leaf that is a light gray, silvery bluish color, and they have some very fine hairs on them. They're very, very soft, and uh, often you'll see the plant out in the prairie, and it has this look. There's somebody wondering what I'm doing. It'll have this look of uh, um, being real gray or silvery color. And that's one of the reasons why it's called lead plant is um, because it has this look that it looks like lead. Another thing about lead plant that it has very, very, very deep roots. Uh, it has a tap root that can be up to about four feet long and then its rest of its roots um, are be, can be, go, go up to 15 to 20 feet long. Um, and that's another reason why it's called lead plant. Um, the, Pioneers, when they were tilling up the prairie, they would run into the lead plant, and if you can imagine going through um, the prairie with a, um, a hand-pushed or a cow-pulled um, plow, and you ran, ran into the uh, deep roots of the lead plant, it felt like you were plowing through lead. So there's another explanation on why it's called lead plant. Those deep, deep roots uh, give this plant a um, uh, great drought control. It can um, survive through drought and it's also a good plant to have in your prairie because your other plants that might not have that deep of roots, these guys go way down to get their moisture and your other plants around it can uh, get the moisture that's not as far down in the ground. Um, also as I mentioned great for erosion control because of those long long roots. A little more about the leaves before I move on to the flower. I don't know if I mentioned there are between 50 there can be up to 50 different little um, leaflets on the compound leaf and they are oval or egg shaped and I know I mentioned that they're very soft um, and they have these very fine hairs on them. The stem is also a real light green color and it also is very hairy and very soft. Okay so if we move on to the flower you can see that they grow in spikes um, and there's usually a, a, an end terminal uh, spike or raceme um, and then each of these little uh, spikes has a, a multiple number of flowers on them. Each flower itself is just one petal. It's a light purple to a um, 
violet blue petal and this just one petal and that one petal um, kind of forms into a loops around or wraps around into a, like a tube that wraps around the stamen and the anthers until um, it's the end of pollination and then it, the the petal will flatten out so the one thing that's super cool about lead plant that catches everyone's attention and the reason why I'm wearing an orange t-shirt today is that the stamens are a reddish color and at the end of the stamens is a bright orangish yellow uh, anther and so you've got this purple and this orange that just pops out at you when you take a close look at lead plant. Lead plant is pollinated by, uh, by bees and there is one particular bee that only will thrive on lead plant. I'm getting pushed over by my doggy here. Lead plant blooms in the Midwest um, in May through August and another name for uh, lead plant is uh, buffalo bellow and uh, I looked this up uh, they, it's called buffalo bellow because um, the Native Americans said that the lead plant blooms uh, the time of the bison rut um, and the bison um, mating season is July through September um, and so that's why it's called buffalo bellow is because the bison are in rut at the same time that the lead plant is blooming and that, that, so there's another cool name for this plant this plant was also used by the Native Americans uh, for tea um, and also for uh, smoking tobacco. The leaves for both the tea and the smoking tobacco was, um, were the leaves. And they also used it for several different uh, medicinal use, uses as well. I've mentioned that this plant is an indicator of a, of a healthy prairie. This plant actually put nitrogen back into the land. Um, it is used often for prairie restoration. Another reason, the third reason why it's called lead plant is because there was a belief that the plant actually indicated that there was um, lead ore um, under, in the land under where this plant was growing. So you have three reasons why it's called lead plant. One, uh, that it actually looks the color of lead. Two, that it indicates that there could be uh, lead in the land, which is just a folklore. And three, that it felt like lead when you had to plow through those prairie shoestring like um, roots of it. So there you have lead plant. It is a beautiful plant out in the prairie. Um, they say that this that a lead plant could live to be centuries old. I'm not quite sure how they know that but uh, that is what I've read in several resources that this plant can live to be a very live a long long time. Um, as I've mentioned it is drought resistant, fire resistant. It is just a beautiful beautiful prairie plant. Uh, if, that you would want to restore into your prairie. One last thing, uh, animals love it. Uh, cattle, bison, deer, uh, all love lead plant. I guess it's very tasty to them. However, you don't have to necessarily worry that it's going to be eaten down and destroyed because of those long uh, roots. Um, the cattle can eat it or the deer can eat it and it will come back um, again uh, because of its of its roots okay so here i am in this absolutely gorgeous prairie i'm talking about lead plant there are all kinds of flowers behind me i'm not sure what you can see behind me i have a butterfly milkweed which you can find in one of my videos i've got coreops coreopsis next to me um, there is compass plant which is another video that you can find um, on my youtube channel um, so please check out my YouTube channel. Please um, subscribe to my channel. We cover a lot of, of or I cover a lot of native wildflowers um, with information about how to identify it and what are some of the uses. Um, and again, I just encourage you to get out, get out and uh, enjoy the outdoors. And I'm sure that when you do, you'll see something wonderful. Thank you for watching. This is Prairie Dog and the Iowa Prairie Girl.